you first heard about Spin Launch, uh, for, as everybody else did, which is the ridiculous YouTube videos or the, you know, the sort of like, oh, these people are doing this down in California. And, and you know, many, many eyebrows were raised, right? Because we looked at that and we said, this is ridiculous. You know, we're building a 1U CubeSat. The worst thing that we could do is build it for 10,000 Gs. We can barely make it for like, you know, random vibe, right? Because this launch environment is unique, I think it's it's really helpful when we can uh, pave the way and show what that kind of development actually looks like. We have spun a 1U satellite with all of the key pieces that you'd hope to see in a full satellite spin test, and it works. So we didn't want to just uh, spin any box that we call a satellite. We wanted to spin a real satellite. The Portland State Aerospace Society is a student group, interdisciplinary student group, here at Portland State University. So ORSAT came from wanting to build a CubeSat, a small nano satellite, that we wanted to be open source. So right now we've got a 1U in space, which is ORSAT Zero, it's Oregon's first satellite, and it's a technology demonstrator for the ORSAT bus. So when we first engaged with ORSAT, we were talking with their uh, faculty leader talking through the idea of what we were trying to do here, building a satellite that you could spin up to 10,000 Gs and still operate the same way as you would any other satellite afterwards. We asked Orsat, what would it take to knock your socks off that this satellite could survive 10,000 Gs? If we would could do it a launch with you guys, right? What would we have to have? Well, we have to see the solar cells not fall off, right? Uh, and not break, obviously. We'd have to see the battery pack, which is the heaviest component we've got, not, you know, turn into a pile of dust or, or worse, flaming pile of dust. And uh, the chips not fall off. Orsat has a battery pack that they designed that is open source. So we were able to take that design and analyze it ourselves. Their battery pack is standard battery pack construction in the satellite industry. What we wanted to see about that battery pack though is can it survive 10,000 Gs by itself with no modifications whatsoever? We as a group didn't think they were gonna go past 100 Gs. Um, and I think you said they reached 7,000 Gs and w we were shocked. For a lot of components, they're already pretty close to being G-hardened. The university team was able to design a battery pack that survived 7,600 Gs with no modifications by accident. We made a few key changes to the battery pack, including aligning the long axis of the battery cells with the G vector, so they're kind of like a pillar or a column under compression. We also took those battery cells and put them in a carbon fiber tube. This tube construction is something that NASA already does for fire suppression on some of their battery packs. We also moved the battery cells down so that they're resting on the floor of the satellite. And then we added just a little bit of glue in behind the cells and on the electronics. When we made those small modifications, we then spun the modified battery up to 10,000 Gs and showed that it survived, leveraging almost the exact same design as ORSATs with those key changes. The solar cells that we used are a little bit different than ORSATs. Um, they're just a little bit bigger, but otherwise they're exactly the same. For the frame, we took ORSAT's open source design and we did our own analysis on it first before we manufactured it and built it to see if it would survive 10,000 Gs. And we found that it was pretty close as is. This, this still looks very similar, right? We still have the four rails. They're still spaced the same uh, way apart. I especially like if you look at um, the sidewalls here, if we turn these sideways, um, that it's the you know, same pattern. Yep. Um, we're not adding thickness or ribs or anything like that. We wanted to keep the web the same. The C3 V5, uh, C3 stands for Command Communications and Control, onboard computer, flew on ORSAT 0, and that's what you guys spun. We took their onboard computer and added just a little bit of glue, otherwise it was completely unmodified. There are a few key lessons that we've learned over the years of G-hardening and using the accelerator behind me to do all of this G-hardening testing. On a lot of electronics, they survive a really high G-level unmodified, but for some of those bigger components like large capacitors or connectors, a little bit of glue uh, goes a long way and will actually uh, allow it to survive 10,000 Gs. I think there's a, a huge milestone there where you put all of these key satellite subsystems together into a 1U satellite and, and showing that all of those together can function.
we plug it in and see if it still clicks and beeps? Yeah. All right, cool. So that's a good sign. So that's the watchdog timer coming on, that's the power supply going on, and that's the radio power coming on. That's the CAN bus. Hey, there you go. So that means that we're getting CAN messages? Yep, we're getting CAN messages. Awesome. Which is good. And I've got my serial port here, and I'm talking to it, and I can actually go ahead and send a beacon. And you can see the little LED flash of the beacon. So that's great. Yeah, so that means that, that yeah, RF works. Survived, yeah. yeah, at this point, it's talking to the battery pack. The battery pack is now on. It got turned on by the C3, so it saw it and said, oh, there's the battery pack. Let me turn it on. Nice. And now we're operating. Uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say it flat out, we're, we're shocked. Uh, we had no idea that you could actually spin this up to 10,000 Gs and it would survive. We were surprised by the small amount of modifications we needed to make. We were expecting to have a flood-filled epoxy brick, right? And instead, it was our boards. Yes, there's epoxy on some of the larger components, and yes, you know, you have to put them in the right you know, way and things like that, but that was a surprisingly engineerable, uh, if that's a word, kind of uh, solution or uh, change to the system. What I am convinced now, which I was not convinced before, is that we can build something without a lot of uh, work and uh, without a lot of effort that could survive the 10,000 Gs. Spinning the 1U has been a part of the development plan from the very beginning, right? You start small and you incrementally improve the TRL level or the milestone uh, maturity that we're at. We weren't surprised that the 1U survived because we've built up this engineering intuition over time and, and we have a good sense of what succeeds and, and what is susceptible um, to failure. It's really exciting to be able to say that we've spun a satellite up to 10,000 Gs.